Hello everyone, welcome back to the Mass Retirees Weekly Update. Today is Friday, February 24th. I'm Sean Duhamel, thank you so much for joining with us and tuning in again this week. Now, as you might be able to tell from the window behind me, we're going through a little bit of a snowstorm here in Boston as of Thursday afternoon when I'm filming this video. So we're not out of the woods yet with our lovely winter. We've had really nothing to complain about up until this point other than a few pretty severe cold snaps, but we've had no snow to speak of. Um, but it is still February, still got at least another several weeks or so of winter, and it is Massachusetts after all, so who can complain? Now, I wanna focus this week on what's happening at the local level with the acceptance and the full adoption of the additional 2% COLA, which of course was approved by the legislature and signed into law by former Governor Charlie Baker last fall. Now, this week, it's President's Week, it's School Vacation Week. There's not a lot happening um, here in Massachusetts or really around the country in terms of legislative activity or in terms of healthcare policy. Um, we will have a big announcement next week following the GIC's meeting on Thursday, uh, March 2nd. At that meeting, the GIC will establish all of the insurance premium contribution rates for the coming fiscal year. So please look to next week's video and next week's email message from me uh, for a full update of what's happening with the GIC and, and some other healthcare related topics as well. But in the meantime, I wanna talk about the local COLA. Now, if you are a retired state employee or a member of the teacher's retirement system, you have already received the additional 2% COLA in your pension check going all the way back to this past July 1st. The legislature approved a 5% COLA in July. That 5% COLA, which was finally adopted um, for the local level last fall, allows local retirement systems to go beyond the traditional 3% COLA and provide local retirees with that same 5% COLA that was paid to state and teacher retirees last summer. And that COLA, while it's only applied to FY23, which is the current fiscal year, that COLA, like all other COLAs paid in Massachusetts, becomes a permanent part of your pension um, base, is your, of your base pension. And that means that that amount of money that you're receiving will continue to be part of your pension indefinitely going forward. It's that cumulative effect. It is something that we have here in Massachusetts that's really pretty rare around the country. In most other states and in other government entities, the annual cost of living adjustment, the COLA, is really treated as a bonus check. It's even called a 13th check in certain locations, uh, like our friends down in Texas. It does not become part of those retirees' um, base pension. And so that's a benefit really here in Massachusetts that we have, that we're very proud of, it works and we're gonna to continue to try to incrementally make improvements to that. So at the local level, cities and towns have a two-step process in which they have to go through in order to approve the additional 2%. The first step of the process is the approval by the local retirement board. Each municipality or local retirement system is governed by a five-member board. Two of the members of the five-member board are elected by the members of that retirement system. So those elected members are your representatives on the retirement board. So they're your voice, they're your eyes and ears, and they're your number one advocates. But thankfully, the vast majority of retirement board members, whether they be elected or appointed or ex officio members based on their, their job, if they're the finance director or the town treasurer, oftentimes they'll serve on the retirement board. By and large, with very few exceptions, we are blessed to have a great group of people working at the local level as well as at the state level with your best interests in mind, you know, trying to do their best every day to serve retirees, serve active employees, and they do a very, very good job of managing local retirement systems and investing your money. And we are now seeing the fruits of that labor, particularly on the investment side. And as we have been saying now for the past several years, we believe that the success that we have generated through both the state, teacher, and local retirement systems in terms of robust investment returns, that those monies should be shared with the beneficiaries of the system, with the retirees of the system. 
So again, the first step of the process is the adoption of the additional 2% by the retirement board. Once that takes place, the issue then goes before the local city or town government or the governing authority for the district or the regional retirement system. So that could be a board of selectmen, city council, mayor, you know, depending on how your local government is organized and what their charter calls for. So as of today, as of the, this recording on Thursday afternoon, we have 45 retirement systems that have approved the additional 2% COLA. That's 45 out of 102 local systems. So we're almost at the halfway point and we're very proud of the progress that's been made. We're very thankful to our local retirement board members, in particular the elected members for really taking the bull by the horns, advocating at the local level, and very quickly, just over the past two or three months, moving forward um, with getting this approved at the local level. Now, out of the 45 systems, I am happy to report that as of today, 27 local governments have fully approved the additional 2% COLA, and those retirees from those 27 communities will by now or by the end of this month start to receive that additional benefit as part of your pension check. Now the remaining systems that have approved the COLA but are awaiting action by the local legislative body are at various stages of the process. Some are coming up for a vote literally early next week and we're hopeful um, the city councils such as Fall River um, will fully approve the COLA next week and their retirees can start to begin to receive the benefit. But the other half of the systems are also at various stages of this process. Um, they're working with their actuaries and other um, officials to determine the cost and come up with, with the means to, to pay for it, which the money comes out of the retirement fund. It is not an appropriation of the municipal government and that's something that in some cases has been a little bit confusing out there. Some municipal officials wrongly assume that, that they need to appropriate this additional money. That's not the way this works. Funding for COLAs, just like all other pension benefits, comes out of the local retirement system. And of course, the local cities and towns do make an, a, a, an a appropriation to that fund each and every year. But the various aspects of what's paid out as part of um, liabilities and assets and so forth, that is all rolled together as part of the pension funding schedule. And that is reviewed every two years and the annual appropriation is reviewed every two years. So a, an approval of the additional 2% COLA right now in 2023 has no direct impact on the city or town budget for the coming fiscal year or even the, the current fiscal year. And one of the things that Mass Retirees has been working with local officials on is just simply providing the information and providing the facts as to how all of this works and how the boards operate. But I wanna say a, a special word of thanks once again to all of those local officials local retirement board members, local retirees, and in some cases, state retirees or retired teachers who are working at the local level on behalf of their local retirees to get things like the additional 2% COLA passed. Same applies to the COLA base, which is an ongoing progress, and we are making tremendous progress on these issues. So my hope is that by the time we get to the end of March, and the next round of retirement board meetings take place as well as city council and boards of selectmen and so forth, um, that we will be well over half of the retirement systems have either approved the COLA or we're at full um, adoption of the benefit that retirees can start to get paid. Now at the same time, we are also working at the state level as part of the ongoing legislative and FY24 budget process to increase the COLA base for state retirees as well as members of the teacher's retirement system. The COLA benefits for state and teacher retirees are initiated and approved by the state legislature with the approval of the governor. It has now been about 12 years since we've seen an increase in the COLA base. Um, beyond the, the current $13,000 that was established back in 2011. So we are well beyond what we think is a reasonable amount of time 
um, for this benefit to be incrementally increased. Now, for those of you who are new retirees and you may be asking yourselves, well, why isn't the COLA percentage applied to the full um, pension benefit? That's simply just not how our system works. It's not how the system was designed. And the funding mechanisms that go into um, providing for these benefits and funding these benefits simply cannot accommodate COLAs based on the full pension benefit. That is extremely rare in today's society, whether it be the public sector or the private sector. There are a handful of systems around the country that do pay full COLAs based on the entire pension. Um, but those systems were set up originally to provide for those types of benefits. For Massachusetts or the cities and towns within Massachusetts to suddenly um, begin to provide a full COLA benefit, um, it just simply is not something that the retirement systems can financially sustain. So that leaves us in a, in a situation where we need to continue to make incremental improvements to the base. And we have seen great progress made just over the past couple of years at the local level where a growing number of systems are either close to or at $18,000 for their base. And we have at least two systems, Wellesley and Bristol County, who are proposing to go beyond $18,000 for the coming fiscal year. So what we are proposing at the state and teacher level is to raise the base from the current $13,000 up to a new level of 16,000 starting with FY24 on July 1st. We are working with the Healy administration as well as the legislative leadership in the hope that we can um, include this provision in the FY24 state budget, um, which of course the governor will file her version next week, followed by the House of Representatives in April and then the state Senate in May. So stay tuned to this channel. We'll continue to update you on all breaking news, whether it's pension or healthcare related. Um, at the local level, if you do not see on within today's email your local retirement system listed, please feel free to reach out to your local retirement board members. There is a link in today's email uh, where you can find the contact information and the names of your local, con local retirement board members. Um, they're there to, to serve you and work with you, and, and they will be happy to uh, update you on where their local retirement system is in terms of, of the overall process. But thank you for tuning in. We will be back to you again next week. Please make sure to like today's video if you have not yet subscribed um, through YouTube or Facebook to receive these weekly updates, please do so. And if you're watching this video and you're not yet a Mass Retirees member, or a subscriber to the Mass Retirees newsletter if you're an active employee, please consider doing so. You can find information on becoming a member or becoming a subscriber at massretirees.com. Look in the right hand margin and there is a link or links available to allow you to sign up online through our secure portal. We'd love to have you as an official part of Mass Retirees. Um, it is strength in numbers. We are a nonprofit, a private nonprofit, um, who are here to serve retired Massachusetts public employees and to be your voice. So, with that, I'm going to sign off. I'm going to head out in the snowy weather, but we'll be back to you again next week with a new update. Thank you so much, everybody. Take care.